All praises and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another opportunity that we can continue with the beautiful scenes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the compilation of a hadith by Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala and today we'll be doing the 15th hadith in our series of hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this hadith was narrated by Hazrat Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu a very famous companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was one of the latter companions to accept Islam but yet you do not find any companion that narrated as much ahadith like that of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu and that is due to his immense love for the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to be in the company of Rasulullah and to listen and learn the deen from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself so the hadith Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrates أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليسمت ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم جاره ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه رواه البخاري ومسلم أبو هريرة نريد أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said the translation that let whoever believes in Allah and the last day which is the day of judgment he either speak good or remain silent. Rasulullah saw straight to the point that فَلْيَكُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ الْيَاسْمُتْ Speak good or remain silent. Then he continues وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ And whosoever believes in Allah and the last day then فَلْيُكْرِمْ جَارَهُ He should honor his neighbor. And then Rasulullah saw continues again that whosoever believes in Allah and the last day then يُكْرِمْ he should honor his guests. He should honor his the people in his company that he is hosting. This hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasizes many other statements and many other hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about how we should deal with one another. As one of the hadiths we did earlier before, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi mentioned that لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحبوا لأخيه ما يحبوا لنفسه أو كما قال عليه السلام that no one of you truly believes until he loves for his Muslim brother what he loves for himself and if I'm not mistaken it was probably two or three hadiths ago that we did two or three series ago that we did in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that not a single no one of you single no one of you truly believes until he loves for his Muslim brother what he loves for himself this hadith now Rasulullah sallam is telling us that whosoever truly believes in Allah on the day of judgment then he should honor his neighbor, he should honor his guest, or he should speak good or remain silent. So it shows us how we should try to create that strong bond among one another, how we should try to create a strong bond among our, our, our folks nearby, our neighbors, our guests, our friends, our family. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us as Muslims. The responsibility that we have uh, to one another and it starts with one most important thing, with our tongue. It starts with the very most important thing that is our, our tongue. That the tongue is such a flesh that if we do not control it, we say things and the tongue can break that the heart of mankind, that the heart of another human. It say things, this small flesh, this small piece of tongue can say things that will cause enmity for years and generations after generations. So this is something very, very important that Rasulullah started off by as Muslims, we need to protect, we need to protect our tongue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, regarding to that of statement of mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Qaf, that, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما يلفذ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the statement of mankind that insan does not utter any statement or any word he does not utter any word any loves any statement except that there is a watcher nearby him that is ready to record this that there is someone that is always there to record the statement of that insan 
So whatever we say from our tongue, that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa started off. And another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that emphasized the aspect of tongue. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that Qala alayhi salatu wa sallam May yadman li ma bayna lahayahi wa ma bayna rijalahi adman lahul jannah. Or come call, that whosoever safeguards from me, whosoever promised me that he will safeguard what is between the two lips, what is between his two jaw, then and that what is between his two legs, I will safeguard for him Jannah. I will promise him Jannah. Whosoever safeguard for me those things, that is what is between his jaws, between his lips, and that which is between his two legs, those two things to safeguard. One between our jaw, it's our tongue, and between our legs, that of private parts. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned, whosoever promised me and whosoever can safeguard and be careful with these two things, these two these two parts of our bodies, then I promise that person Jannah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again, he's showing us the emphasis of safeguarding our tongue. The tongue, my respect to gathering, my brothers and sisters of Islam. It is something very, very detrimental if we do not use it correctly. If we use it in the right manner, it can help us to attain lofty ranks in Jannah. Because it can be in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And similarly, if we were to use it in such manner, which may be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which may be causing harm towards another humankind, then it will lead us into destruction. It will lead us into drawing us towards the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and protect us all that we do not be from the inhabitants of Jahannam due to our tongue. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us and guide us that we can use our tongue in such manner that it will lead us towards Jannah. Ameen. There is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recorded by Imam Abu Dawood rahimahullah in his book Sunan Abi Dawood. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mention of a pious man in the time of Bani Israel. And the people of Bani Israel those time, Rasulullah sallallahu said that he was a pious man and he used to see his fellow folks, he used to see a fellow, his fellow comrades around him committing sins. I wonder he said to one, one the pious man said to one sinner, one other person, that by Allah you will not enter Jannah. By Allah you are going to the hellfire because of the sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take this person who was a salih among those people, he was a righteous man among those people, to take him to task to show the importance of safeguarding one's tongue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the two men die, the pious man was punished and placed into the hellfire and the one who was a sinner, he was placed, he was forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and placed into Jannah. And when the question was asked, why? Then he was said, because you utter such statement which you do not know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had in store for that person. What the destiny of that person was. No matter what good deeds we do, we cannot judge someone based on the action. Yes, outwardly we can admonish someone, we can stop someone and try to encourage someone from not doing uh, haram or not doing a prohibited action. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us, this is a quality of a believer. A believer of us Muslims, Kuntum khayra ummatin nas, that you are the best of mankind taken out for the benefit of people. bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna al munkar, that you command people towards good and you prohibit people for, towards evil. So that is from the quality of a mu'min. That's what makes us from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we have to command towards good and prohibit people from doing evil. Yes, but at the same time, when you command someone towards good or you, uh, or you encourage someone towards good and prohibit them from evil, you are not demeaning them. You are not criticizing them. You are not telling them that, oh, you will go to Jahannam. Oh, you will never be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. You have to encourage them. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, another part, that Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mu'ridhatil hasana. That you call towards the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using hikmah, using wisdom. And wisdom may, diff may be different according to the time, according to the person, the individual that you're speaking to. The wisdom that you may use for a person by the name of Bakr may not be the same that a person by the name of Farzan will use. So the wisdom that you approach one another with will be completely different according to the individual. Again, it may be different according to the place, according to the time, according to the situation. So you call towards the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom. And good advice. Instead of always showing the person the retribution of the action, you show them the good thing of doing the good action. Instead of always telling them the evil of the outcome of their current action, you show them the good outcome of doing another action.
So you always try to encourage people instead of putting down someone. So you use our tongue in the correct way, in the correct manner. So hence Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave us the perfect advice without a doubt. We either say something good, we either say something that is beneficial to someone else, or else we shall keep our mouth, we shall keep our trap as we say, shut. We shall keep our we shall be silent. If we have nothing good to say, if we have nothing beneficial to say, then we shall not say anything at all. Just keep quiet. And doesn't mean by keeping quiet you will not interact with another Muslim, you will not interact with others, but no, that is why you smile. That is why you can always reply to a salam. You can always give someone salam. So keeping silent doesn't mean that you will not speak to someone, but you have nothing beneficial to say. Don't indulge in a conversation. Don't speak nothing to raise a conversation. Just give assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that is it. And without any doubt, any, any person with logic, any logical person, or individual will tell us and tell you the importance of safeguarding one tongue. Whether you're a Muslim or you're a non-Muslim, we see that the tongue, the amount of effect and bad effect it has given in our community, it has, it has caused the amount of problem it has caused among families, among friends, by just uttering something which we may not even realize. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after mentioning about saying good or remain silent, Rasulullah sallam mentioned the second part of the hadith, فَلْيُكْرِمْ, فَلْيُكْرِمْ جَارَهُ That one should honor his neighbor. This is something which is not strange. A few uh, a few months back, sometime within our lockdown of COVID, there was a lecture that went out on behalf of Masjid As-Siddiq. And I've mentioned in there regarding to the importance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa admonishing us and advising us regarding our neighbors. And the famous hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that Jibreel alayhi salam used to give so much bequests and so much advices regarding the neighbors that I thought neighbors will be part of our inheritance. They will inherit our wealth. That they will be part of our heirs. That's so much admonition he used to have regarding neighbor that Rasulullah saw some thought that neighbors will also inherit just as family will inherit. To show you the close ties that one have with neighbor. And that's why Rasulullah saw some telling us that whosoever believes in Allah in the last day, that he should, he should honor and respect and show that kindness towards his neighbor. Another hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made mention that a person will not have complete deen, a person will, have not, will not have complete faith and iman whose neighbor is not safe from his hands and his tongue. Whose neighbor does not feel safe with him, such a person will have incomplete iman to show the gratitude and the great extent that a person shall have comfort with his neighbors, the way a person shall deal with his neighbors. And regarding to our neighbor, we should always be kind and just to our neighbor we should always be patient with our neighbor even if they're annoying if they have uh, they are annoying to us even if they are causing difficulty to us we try to show patience to our neighbor we try to be sabur we try to show patience because we want allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be patient with us just as we want allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show mercy upon us to be patient with us we should also be the same towards our neighbor yes let us not think that my neighbor is doing harm to me why he can't think about that why he can't think about showing mercy and being merciful to me but as Muslim, we don't look and point fingers at others, but we try to do our own action and what we can do ourselves first. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonish and remind us in the Quran that A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Ya Ayyuhaladina Amanu, Ku and Fusakum wa ahalikum nara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, those who believe that you save yourself and your family. So first priority is yourself. When it comes to doing a good action, don't worry about the another person's not doing it. You worry about yourself first. When you have it yourself, then inshallah you try and rectify it. You try to see how another person can have that. If your neighbor is doing annoyance to you, don't worry about why. You must be patient and he, he can be patient and show mercy. But you worry about fulfilling the quality yourself. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to reward you regarding the patient. And the last part was Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. That a person who believes in Allah on the day of judgment, he should honor his guest. And this guest is referring to a person, as we know the word is not nothing new to our ears, is that a person who comes in a community who comes to stay for a short while. We show respect, we honor him, we host him. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before prophethood, this was something which was very predominant among the Arabs, honoring and showing respect towards guests. In fact, let alone before Rasul, before prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
In fact, in the time of Musa alayhi salam, that was something that was pre predominant, hosting and showing, and showing honor and respect towards a guest, towards a traveler. A traveler even is considered as a guest by traveling into a new community. We know the story of Musa alayhi salam when he was traveling with Khidr alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to Khidr and they went to a village and the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that when they came to this Qariya, فَأَبَوْ أَيُّ The people of the, of the village refused to host them. So that was something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not have mentioned and showed that the people refused to host them if it, wasn't, if it was not something that was common among the practice of people. So hosting a guest, a traveler, hosting a stranger was something very common. And the most, the most prerequisite and the most, um, the long, the minimum criteria is that of one night and one day to host a guest. And the Arabs, subhanAllah, this was from among their culture and from among their practice, even before Islam, that it was something very high, taken to high esteem. And that is why when Rasulullah sallallahu was given prophethood and the first revelation, the first visit from Angel Jibreel alayhi salam and gave Hira, when he returned back to his wife, as a Khadija radiallahu anha, and he was shaken and he was very afraid. As a Khadija radiallahu anha, when she mentioned to him that, you know, why you should not be afraid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not cause any harm to you. And from the qualities that she mentioned of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he had before prophethood, one of those qualities was that he honors his guest. He shows respect towards his guest. And regarding to this, many scholars have agreed that hosting a guest and hosting someone who is a traveler or a stranger in a community, it is mustahab and is something that is like and it is recommended. But it is not obligatory. It is not something that is far and compulsory. But it is a very high and noble act. So, but our main important point to be understood here is that <clears throat> It will be recommended for us to host people who are upright and deen and not someone that we know is an evil doer, is a sinner, or he may be a mushrik, or he may be someone ascribing power to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, if he's a traveler and we can have other means of assisting them, we can. But hosting someone in your home, you try to utilize and to host those people that may be of good towards and maybe from righteous people and following upright deen and sharia. So Allah subhanahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in coincide with Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us this hadith and tells us this hadith to teach us proper etiquettes and proper manners of Islam how a Muslim should be regarding to our speech, regarding to our action of our neighbors and regarding to how we live with a stranger. The three things, our speech which we will deal with every day with our people, with the people we surround with our colleagues, with our comrades, our neighbors who we live with every day and a guest who will not be someone we know, a stranger. So Rasulullah show us the social life of a Muslim. Today we talk about Islam and social life, our modern day. Islam is a religion that had everything laid out from 1400 years ago until the Day of Judgment. This advice of Rasulullah is applicable in our everyday life, our social life, our social etiquettes and manners dealing with people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us that we can try and implement the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa into our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can take benefit of the word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let us not forget that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as the best of example to mankind. And to implement his way, we will not be rendered as true. And in fact, this is the best and most perfect example and the best way of life to attain closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an understanding of his deen and give us an understanding of the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.